All right, welcome to part six on the abandoned $500 boat build. So we picked this thing up for 500 bucks at an abandoned location and uh, this boat was horrible. I'll show you guys pictures right here. It was absolutely disgusting. We redid everything. And uh, last video, we got the engine all done, new spark plugs, new water pump impeller, and we fixed the overheating problem of the engine. So now that water pump is spurting water out fast and it's cooling down the engine. But last video, we were out fishing and uh, this pump, this tilt trim pump, decided to go out. It was leaking tons of oil through the seal right here. You can see it on my hand. And it was just pumping through there and uh, wasn't building pressure. So I actually got to the boat landing and uh, the engine would not come up. So I had to manually just pull it up and it's a pain in the butt. So today we're gonna try to fix that and see if we can replace that upper seal on this thing. And then at the end of the video, we're gonna go over all the specs and payments I made towards this boat to refinish it. I'm guessing it's gonna be pretty pricey, but uh, stay tuned to the end of the video for that. But yeah, let's get going on it. I think the first thing we're gonna do is get the engine on the mounts here. So you want those safety mounts down. And we're going to get this little guy out, this pin. Let's get that out. It looks like a threaded rod. So here is the new part we're replacing. I think this was like 120 bucks for this part online on uh, Amazon. But uh, you can also buy the seals for it, but I didn't feel like replacing all those tiny seals in there. They're really hard to get to, so we just bought the whole cap. Plus, I'll probably wreck the cap getting it off because it requires a special tool which is right here. And this was $100 just for the tool. So, that's what that looks like. We'll be using that too. Right, let's just see what's going on there. It's all caked with dirt. See if we can pull that pin. All right, there's the pin. Got that out. And now, if we look down here, this moves freely. Well, it should. There should be a relief valve somewhere on this thing. You can see the oil oozing out of it. You can see the red oil there. Just oozing out. So I have to find the relief valve now. 
I don't know what it is. Those look like fill caps right there. I believe that's the check. The fill check right there and then the fill, I believe, or the opposite. Fill check and fill. Um, underneath here are a couple different ones. You can see right there, they're, they're hex, uh, hex bolts there. Those might be the relief valves. I'll have to look into it and just check, make sure uh, we're doing the right thing. All right, now we're gonna be using this tool. Basically a spanner tool. A super expensive spanner tool. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put them in these holes. Try to crank this thing off of here. best if it come from this way, so I can pull. There we go. We got the budge. That sucker's on there. There's a bolt holding it on down here. That's supposed to pull all the way through, but as you can see, the bolt right here is holding that on. So we're going to cut the bolt right there, and then we can get that out. No, that should pull right out of there.
we go. There's the relief valve in here. It's on the other side. Try to get that off. It's a relief valve in there. So you can release the pressure with that right there. I think there's actually a C clip in there holding that on. This C clip out of here. That came right out. Now we can get that out. Take the top part of the pump out that we need to replace. We might have to, oh yeah, see that? See all that oil coming out? That looks like it's in great shape. The O-ring looks good. All right, now we should be able to move that. Move up and down now. All right, we're gonna try to open this up. Try to get that out of there. You can see all the ATF fluid in there. Gotta pour that out. It's hard because the wires are attached to this thing. Alright. It's hard doing it with the wires attached. It's on there pretty good. Wonder what happens when you there we go. This is the cap we're replacing up here. Looks like the seal went bad in there. All rings on here look pretty good. All right, so here's the piston right here. And you can see just like a normal piston on a bike or anything, it's got the rings. And you can see the rings are actually split right there. 
You guys can see that, and right there, see all those rings are split like that? And there's an O-ring in the middle of them. So those can actually move around like that. And uh, that's held on by a nut, a washer, and then there's always little springs around here. See that? So in order to get this top piece off, which is this part that we want to replace right here, this needs to come off. So we're going to take an impact and try to get that off of there. Oh, get that off there. We have to be careful taking this off. So it looks like the springs are all the same. We'll have to see. So washer comes off. That spring is that size. Alright, so far they're all the same. So I'm thinking they're gonna be all the same here. That's good. Actually little pins in there too, jeez. So this different colored pin right here goes where it's colored right there. There's actually like little pins in there too. With ball bearings. Oh geez. Little ball bearings with the pins come out. It's a pretty complicated piston. Then you can just kind of you're supposed to be able to just Get this off of there. I don't think there's anything else holding that on. There's that old ring in there. That's sad on it like that. Alright. Now this thing will slide right off like that. And what's nice is that we have a brand new one. Hopefully it's the right size. A lot of the eBay listings were the wrong size, so you had to really look at the comments or the reviews on uh, Amazon to find out which one worked here. This is all greased up already, it looks like. So all new seals in there. Let's just do a comparison here quick. New one, old one. So right here on the old one, we're gonna just pry up that seal here. Let's see what that looked like. Oh yeah, that's really cracking. It's really bad. Just like falling apart. Yeah, so that seal is like really, really bad in there. That in there. And the sun probably just hardened it up. There we go. There's the old seal. Pretty bad. And this is what that would look like on the shaft here. So you can see oil can seep right through that seal. Look at that gap. So that's why it was leaking oil. Break that new seal on there. There we go. That 
that's a lot better. Now we gotta get this one back on so the washer goes on first. This going back on. And you've got the O ring. I'm pushing that O ring a little bit. These little balls have to go in. Ball bearings. It's kind of hard to do. And these little guys go over the ball bearings. Like that. should have five of them. The one right here doesn't have any of the ball bearings or anything. That just has a special spring. And all the other springs go on over the little shaft. By the way, a new piston assembly right here, this whole thing, 350 bucks. So, try not to break it. Then the washer has two, two sides on it. You can see that end comes out, that goes down. Over that. Then you have your nut that goes on here. Alright, time to reinstall the piston and the shaft here. Just make sure there's no debris in there or anything when you reinstall it. Now we're going to dump an ATF until it comes up to the thread line on here. Alright, that's perfect. We gotta get this cat back.
And we're gonna torque that down once we put it back on the engine here. Alright, so now on the front of here, we're going to crack that and add a little bit of fluid to it. Most likely it's not. All right, now we're just gonna pump it up and down. We'll see if it works here. Uh, you wanna do it about five to 10 times. Let's see here. We'll go all the way up. Alright, it's working pretty good. We're gonna add a little bit more fluid to there and then we can reinstall. Alright, let's see if we fix this thing. We're gonna go all the way down, all the way up. All right, she's fixed. No leaking around the seal. Everything looks perfect. I topped off the oil one more time. So that is how you fix that. All right, just picked up this Minn Kota um, bow mount trolling motor here. 200 bucks on Facebook. So we're gonna see if this thing works. A uh, young kid was selling it, so we will see. Also came with a graph he didn't want, he said. Let's see what that looks like. <laughs> Doesn't look too bad. They threw that in for 200 bucks, so not too bad. Got the battery hooked up here. Jumper pack. Let's see what happens. Push this. Uh oh. Oh, there we go. Spinning. I don't know if the 
Oh yeah, that's gonna work too. So steering works on too. Cool. Everything's working. We gotta get this mounted up now. We got the holes lined up to where we wanna be. So we can drop down over the boat here. So we're just gonna drill into the top of the boat here. Just one more test before we completely bolt it in. That looks good. All right, we got that one in. I think we're gonna add one right here. All right, now we just have to get these soldered up for the plug right there. So we need to find a female attachment that plugs into there. One's positive, one's negative, obviously. So we'll have to go to the hardware store and see if we can find something that'll work for that. But uh, everything's looking pretty good. All right, so none of the places had the switch, so we just wired it directly to the source. So we unplugged the switch wire and then just uh, wired those directly to it. And now we're now we're good. So everything's working. We are all good to go. We're gonna quick fire up the boat, make sure it runs before we take it out and test it out.
We're gonna try bobber fishing today. The little trolling motor's working perfect. Thing is absolutely mint. Luck doing that. The past couple times we were out here, we couldn't really catch anything with, you know, regular baits. So we'll try the, the live bait this time, see what happens. Typically I don't bobber fish, but we'll see what happens today. All right, nothing at this spot. Just started downpouring on me. It's not looking too good out here. Boat's getting wet. Maybe we'll catch a fish though. We'll see. Yeah, bad time to go fishing. Every time I go, it's about to storm. <laughs> see if we can catch something. It's really coming down. All right. Just got back home. Everything on this boat is perfect. Engine was running great. Bow mount was perfect, running perfectly. Uh, all the electronics work, bilge pump, everything. We got rained on, so we really broke it in today. There was quite a bit of water in there, but it all drained out. And uh, we didn't have any issues. Let's see if the bilge pump is working.
Yep. So, I'm pretty happy with it. This is going to be the final video on the $500 abandoned boat. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video and the series on this thing. I think we did seven or eight videos on this one. And uh, it was definitely a good learning experience working on this thing. This is the first boy I've worked on, so obviously I have a lot to learn, but I did learn a lot along the way. All right, so here is the final list of all the parts that I bought for this thing and the grand total of what I spent. So here we go, plywood, it was 50 bucks a piece, right around there. Bought five pieces, so that's 250 bucks. Um, we've got the stainless nail screws and staples, that was 30, right around 30. Uh, the graph was $130, the bilge pump was 40, the pump hose was 35, the live well pump was 40, uh, the live well pump hose was 35. Marine carpet was right around $200, carpet glue 60, um, the internal paint of the boat, which was spray paint, this spray paint was super expensive, it was 130 bucks for all the cans. Exterior paint, paint was very expensive as well, I think I bought three or four cans of it for uh, 50 bucks a piece, so $200. Um, trailer tires were 180 so $90 a piece. The trolling motor, we bought that off of Facebook, 200 The The trim uh, seal, 120 Water pump impeller, 85 And then the trim, the trim tool to get the lid off was 100 bucks. Decal is 150. Um, we've got the wires for 30, trailer lights for 40. The boat, I paid 500 bucks for the boat. And then the, what is that say? Oh, the seats, $110. So in grand total, we paid $2,665 for everything. So basically brand new boat for $2,665. Not including my time, <laughs> right here. So, um, I've got hours and hours and hours and hours and hours into this boat, so. But uh, I'm not including that, so. $2,665 is the grand total in supplies and everything I paid for this boat, which isn't too bad. I thought it was gonna be a lot higher, so. I'm pretty happy with that. It was my first boat, I made a lot of mistakes. Obviously, I bought too much plywood, I bought a sheet extra. So, stuff like that. Bought too many stainless nails, and I bought a lot of expensive stuff. Like, the carpet glue was super expensive. The, the, the spray paint, I would do different. So, there's a lot of things I would do different, but it uh, didn't cost too much. So, that was the grand total. Hope you guys enjoyed the video on this thing. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next video. And until next time, we are out.